Hello, welcome to Numerista Cole. I wanted to do a quick video right now to talk about closing line value and do some analysis of the closing line value that we got on the picks that we made for today's games. So if you're if you're following, uh, I usually make the picks in the morning, around this time in the morning. Uh, but uh, for today's picks, I actually did the picks last night. So the market was still relatively uh, kind of untouched. It was close to the opening lines. Uh, that we saw for those games. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about closing line value and sort of demonstrate what it is and what it means and, and how it played out in the picks that we made last night. So let's go over and just review the picks that I've made. So again, these are the picks I've made for today's games. And I made them last night. And uh, it's now nine in the morning California time. And we're able to see how the market has moved since I made those picks. And uh, so let's first look at these money line ones. The first one we're going to take a look at is here is the uh, we, we took the Mets plus 137. And one way to sort of get a sense of, you know, was this a good bet or not is to uh, is to actually uh, look and see, could I get this bet now? And at what odds? What are the odds on this bet now? So we click over to wager talk and uh, go over to the money line, look at the Mets game here. You can see we can no longer get the Mets at that value. You could get them as high as 128 now, but we got them at 137, right? So we got a much better price on our bet last night than we could get right now. And in fact, you could take the other side of the bet. You could take Atlanta now, minus 133. So what this means is we actually got enough closing line value that if we wanted to now, we could actually take Atlanta at minus 133. And if we size our bets appropriately, we'd actually be in a, a situation where uh, we could guarantee ourselves a very small profit. So it's pennies on the dollar. But if I wanted to say, hey, right now, I want to just guarantee a very small profit on that bet, I could bet Atlanta now minus 133. And if you size the bets appropriately, you will actually lock in a profit. So that's how you know when you got a lot of closing line value is when it's actually enough to overcome the, the VIG that the bookies are charging. So I thought that was interesting. Let's look at the next bet. Uh, I'm sorry, wrong tab. Um, Marlins plus 187. So if we look now again, Marlins, this line here, we're not getting anywhere near uh, plus 187 anymore. It's uh, 162 is the 164 looks like the best you could get now. And if you look at Circa, let's drill into those odds. You can see that, um, you know, this line's been all over the place, it went very high and then it went back down again. Uh, so there's been a lot of movement. And again, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the numbers, you'll see that uh, we could actually now take the Marlins minus 172, and again, size our bets appropriately and lock in a very small profit if we wanted to. Um, let's look at the next bet, um, was the Reds plus 140. So that's this line over here. So you see again, we can't get the Reds plus 140 anymore. You can get them plus 131. And you could get uh, actually San Francisco minus 137. So again, another example where we could lock in a profit if we wanted with uh, by sizing our bets correctly. So these three bets showed a lot of closing line value. And what that means is more or less that the, the market agreed with my model. So after we placed our bet, not that our model caused this in any way, I don't think anybody's really paying attention to it. But, um, but basically other, Probably a lot of big money bettors who are the sharp bettors who, uh, you know, are placing a lot of money and moving the lines, they probably came to similar conclusions on these games. And when they saw the lines at the prices, we did put a lot of money on those, and that forced the bookies to move their lines. Um, so that that's one way that lines move. Another way that lines might move is, is due to new information, right? So uh, maybe word gets out that somebody's feeling sick, um, or, you know, there's an injury, uh, late breaking or just whatever news, weather, news comes out about the weather, weather forecast changes and people might adjust their, their things appropriately, especially on something like the totals. So now let's look at the totals and, and, and if you look at the totals, we're going to see a different story here on the totals. Um, 
So the first one let's look at is the Diamondbacks and the Orioles. Uh, I had them over eight and a half plus 105. Um, and now if we click over the totals, this was on the uh, Orioles. Uh, let me just double check that. Yeah, Diamondbacks, Orioles. So that's over here. So you see, I bet the over at eight and a half. I got plus 105, but now you can see you could already you can get the eight over at 102. So this is an example where I, I, I have kind of the opposite of closing line value. If I had waited, I could have gotten an even better bet now in the morning uh, than I got last night. So this is an indication that uh, money came in that kind of disagreed with my model. Money came in and said, we like the under at eight and a half, and bets started coming in that way. Uh, so, such that the bookies move their lines and, you know, trying to get more money on the over. So, you know, one, one question is, as a, if you're someone placing money on these bets, it's like, well, my model says this, and now I could get an even better price. Should I, should I put more money in, right? And it really comes down to, you know, how confident are you that your analysis and your model is right compared to the rest of the market? And, you know, most most professional bettors would tell you, you know, be very wary of this because you never know the information. You never know what you don't know, right? So it could be somebody else has some information and they're putting down big money on that information. You just might not have that information. They might know something you don't know. So you always have to judge, you know, is it that somebody knows something I don't know or is, is the market somehow wrong? And, and, and I, I really have faith that I've analyzed the situation and captured the reality better than the market, in which case you could, you know, if you feel that confident, you could put more money down. But most, most betters sort of advise against this because they say usually it plays out that somebody knows something that you don't know. So here's an example where we didn't have closing line value, where we had actually sort of negative closing line value. So we, we placed our, our bet at a worse price than you would get closer to the, the, the start of the game. Um, let's look at the next totals bet. Uh, so we took the Rockies over 10 minus 103. Um, and you can see now you could get nine and a half, right, at minus 105. So again, here's a case where there's a better price to be had um, on the game uh, than, than what you originally bet. So this is a case where we have sort of negative closing line value. So interesting that it worked out that way, that we got significant closing line value on all of our money line bets, but actually got negative uh, closing line value on all our total bets. And, you know, this is just a small sample. I wouldn't draw many conclusions into what happens with these particular five bets. But um, it's an interesting thing to draw a lesson from. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the, the one spread bet that we picked, which was the Blue Jays minus one and a half at plus 181. Let's see what the market is showing now. So Blue Jays are over here, minus one and a half. And it's roughly, the market hasn't really changed that much. You still, you could get now 183. So you can get a couple cents better price, you know, at one place. But for the most part, this is a case where the market really hasn't moved that much. Um, so we wouldn't have really closing value, you know, wouldn't have any closing line value one way or the other. Um, Anyways, I, I thought I'd do that analysis. I thought I'd share this is a really important topic when you're trying to understand, you know, how to make good bets. A lot of people will measure their bets based on the, just the closing line value. Am I getting closing line value? With the assumption that the closing price, if you believe that the closing line price is sort of the true price, is the right answer, the right probability, that's the probability that the coin is going to be flipped as then you want to pay attention to that because that will give you much less variance than looking at the actual win-loss results, right? So if you kind of said, hey, I think this, I bet on this coin like it was going to come up heads, you know, 52% uh, of the time. I thought it was going to come up 56% of the time. At closing line, the market thought it was going to come up 55% of the time. That means like you got some closing line value. Now, whether the head comes up heads or tails, you, you know, you don't know whether you're right or wrong. But that, that's, that's the concept behind closing line value. Anyway, wanted to share that with you. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Drop some comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.